Greetings once again to another Draken Shadow Vlogs, except you might notice that there is no Shadow Blazer. Uh, it's Drac here, and Drac is doing this vlog solo again. Although I have a feeling that later in the year we will get a solo vlog from the Shadow Blazer. Trust me, we'll, we'll make sure that happens. Uh, welcome to this vlog on the newly updated Beauty and the Beast. Uh, the Shadow Blazer wasn't really interested in this one. He hasn't had that much luck with the live-action Disney films. And so it came upon me to actually go and see it because I knew at least I was going to see it because of Why We Geek and all of the other people that I've been talking to asking, pleading, please see Beauty and the Beast because we want to know what you guys think. So welcome to this vlog. If this is your first vlog on Draken Shadow, first of all, welcome. And welcome to uh, Draken Shadow Vlogs where we usually go into plot point after plot point. Uh, and try to explain things, so this usually is very spoiler-heavy. However, this episode is not really going to be that, but this is, that's usually how things go. And then we give our thoughts on the best, the worst, and a final score. Um, today, we're really not going to be going plot point for plot point, because Beauty and the Beast is one of those Disney movies that I have a feeling we've all seen at least once, and if we haven't, we're like three, Okay. So at that point, here's the story in case you didn't know it. There'd be a girl named Belle. There'd be a boy named Beast. Beast, one time, pissed off old lady. She became Sprite. She curse him and his castle. If he not find love and earn love in return, he stay Beast. Belle come into fray and be wooed by Beast. Happily ever after. It's, it's really, like, I don't mean to go into it as, as, as basic as that, but we all know how Beauty and the Beast goes. And again, if you don't, you're like three and you haven't seen it yet, okay? Um, the one thing that I want to touch into is, so I wasn't sure, and I still am not, and people can let me know in the comments below, whether or not this was based to be more an adaptation of the animated feature or the musical because it felt more like it was trying to adapt the musical with additional songs and the way it was structured uh, felt a lot more like the musical. So there were additional scenes that weren't necessarily in the animated feature <coughs> that I did appreciate and so I, I will elaborate on those but really we're just going to get into the nitty gritty here and we're going to get into my opinions. Um... Some of the so going into the additional scenes, I actually think improves it quite a bit. Um, again, this might be done, this might have been done in the musical. I don't know. I've never seen the musical. I've heard some of the songs from it, but I've never actually seen it. Uh, so at that point, <coughs> the fact that they tried to illuminate more onto the backstory of the castle itself, the the people who resided within it. Uh, specifically the Beast, they actually tried to go into the backstory of his parents. Um, I really did like, uh, just because that, that does flesh out the characters a little bit more than the usual Disney archetypes that we are used to. I mean, for crying out loud, um, w when you look at the animated feature, we didn't really know anything about the Beast or, uh, or who he was before he became the Beast. We just knew he was a scumbag. And this actually tried to illuminate, okay, this is why he was so scumbaggy to the old lady, is because he had these circumstances influencing his whole life. Um, the, only, the only thing we got to backstory, really, uh, in Beauty and the Beast was the additional movies that came out. Like, the Bell's Magical Christmas actually tried to show us the moment that uh that he was cursed basically saying it was a, it was on a christmas eve or something like that and that's when it happened but i think this actually did a little bit better the other thing that i will actually say is they tried to flesh out a lot of the characters that weren't necessarily all that fleshed out in this movie um especially the beast the beast is the one that i appreciated the most because w given as much stuff as we had in the animated feature um, I've seen people actually conflict and say, like, I'd rather side with Gaston. And I didn't necessarily disagree with them. They, they could because you at least knew where Gaston stood. But there were still a lot of um, pieces of the beast that were mysterious. Like, you know, exactly that. You know, why did he become a beast? How did he get to that point? And um, did enough changes actually really happen throughout of it? 
throughout the course of the movie. This fixes that. Um, this actually shows you like how he hardened his heart, how he then became a beast, and then eventually how the... I don't, I don't mean to go into the Disney tropes, you know, it's usually, like, girl fall in love, real, like, inst like, they really do believe in love at first sight, and I'm not saying that love at first sight doesn't happen, but it, it it's kind of exa over-exaggerated with Disney. This one actually tried to form a relationship between Belle and the Beast, so... Uh, I really did like that concept. It actually felt like a real relationship in a lot of angles that, that the animated movie I don't think could ever have done. Uh, so I'm not saying that it isn't, that the additional scenes don't help it. In fact, in a lot of cases, they help it more. Uh, they flesh out characters like Belle's father. They flesh out the Beast. They flesh out Gaston and LeFou a little bit. And so at that point... I, it, if I were to recommend just solely based on that, that's not hard for me. This takes an already really great fairy tale and, and fleshes, it out, fleshes it out into something more, something grander than it was. Um, so there's lots of positives that I could get into. First of all, like going into the performances, Emma Watson, I'm just going to say this outright. If you and I were to ever meet in a room... Politically, we'd want to strangle each other. We really would. Probably in real life matters, we'd want to strangle each other. But I can't deny your acting ability. Um, you took a character that I felt was very easy to destroy, especially given the statements and things like that that have happened up until this point, whether they be about the movie or not. This was an easy character to destroy for people, and I actually think you enhanced it. Uh, and I think you actually took it past the is Bella Jesus figure kind of thing because she doesn't necessarily feel like that. She feels, she doesn't feel immortal. She doesn't feel deified. She feels normal. She feels like a regular girl in a really messed up situation. Uh, so at that point, I actually think you enhanced the character from the animated movie. And therefore, I, I can't, I can't deny your acting ability. I think if I ever met you in life, we'd probably strangle each other. But I at least can say professionally, you you do the job and you do the job damn well. Um, <clears throat> the actor that played the Beast uh, is escaping me off the top of my head, but that's also another awesome performance, especially with the voiceover that he had to do with the CG Beast moments. I think there was a lot of motion capture in there too, but that was also an amazing performance because, again, we got to have all of this backstory fleshed out very early on, and, and it actually got me intrigued to know more. And I think that this performance actually helps that because it isn't as a mysterious character, it isn't as mysterious a character anymore. He's a very he's he's very real on screen. He's not uh the typical Disney prince. He actually feels real to some extent. It, it, that's the best way I know how to describe it. He feels like a legitimate character that evolves throughout the story he's very hardened when you first meet him but then he eventually softens and we start to see like where he was gnarled and beast-like at the beginning he becomes more of a refined gentleman later on it's almost like the the, the weight of the curse is being lifted from him and we can actually get him get his character fleshed out the other one that i also want to applaud and and for anybody who criticizes him in the two major roles that he's had, you need to take a long walk off a short pier. Luke Evans as Gaston, this is the recognition that I wanted so bad for him to get as Bard in the Hobbit movies. And he didn't get it. Do you want to know why he didn't get it? Because he got overshadowed by a character that wasn't necessary. Except this time, he wasn't overshadowed, and he stole the damn show whenever he was in the room. The only time I would ever say that he didn't was probably in his, in his interactions with the Beast. But even then, that's a 50-50 deal. Um, when Gaston was in the room, it didn't matter if he was angry or if he was just overly happy. He was the center of the room, and therefore you wanted to know everything that was going on. And he's just as much of a pompous jackass as you would expect. You know, I think Luke Evans did his, did an amazingly great job with what he was given for Gaston. And so at that point, if anybody wants to criticize Luke Evans, feel free to. You are, I'm going, 
I'm not going to say the world thinks you're wrong. I at least think. I at least do. I think he did an awesome job. The other one that I also want to applaud is Josh Gad, aka aka LeFou, aka the controversial moment that came out just before this movie. And uh, I I think he did a great job uh, considering what he had to work with. Because if you look at LeFou from the animated feature, there isn't a whole lot there. It's he's just he's a comical guy that adores Gaston, and this guy actually got a fleshed out character out of it. So, congrats, man! He did a great job. But that's not why you guys are here. This is positive stuff done. You want to know what I think that's bad about it. Let's, let's be honest with each other. It's the internet. We all want to know what Drac thinks is bad about the movie. And here's the thing. The movie ain't perfect. So let's get to it. I have some issues with the casting. I think for the most part, all of the casting was awesome. Um, Emma Watson is Belle. Uh, like I said, the actor's name is Escaping Me for the Beast. That was a great casting role. Luke Evans as Gaston is amazing. Ewan McGregor as Lumiere was awesome. Great casting opportunity. Emma Thompson was good. The only problem that I have with her is that and I think she even knows this to some extent. Like she, I think she's even answered it in interviews. I'm not knocking Emma Thompson. She did a great job, but the problem is, is that Angela Lansbury came before her and Angela Lansbury is, she's golden when she's on the screen, whether it be voice, whether it be real life, she's golden when she hits the screen. So at that point, this is what Emma Thompson was competing with. And unfortunately, I'm going to be on the side of Angela Lansbury. And it's nothing against Emma Thompson. She did a great job with what she was given. But Angela Lansbury is just a time. It's a timeless performance for Mrs. Potts. And so I will at least compliment Emma Thompson for doing as well as she did, considering the fact that she was going to be compared to Emma Thompson. Everybody was going to be compared to their, their animation counterparts. And for good reason. <laughs> and for the most part, a lot of them really did beat their animation counterparts. Like I said, Bell did. The Beast did, definitely. And I can't remember uh, his name off the top of my head who played him, but or played the animated version of the Beast. But we're already looking at a very different deal. Except one. I believe Ian McKellen as Cogsworth was a wasted opportunity. I'm going to let that sink in for the people who are going to already start clickety-clacking and writing me comments. Here's my beef. Ian McKellen is an amazing actor. I will always compliment Ian McKellen. But he was underutilized here. I honestly believe that the David Ogden Steers Cogsworth had more lines than he did. And that's almost to me a cardinal travesty. If you're going to have Ian McKellen in a movie or in a TV show or whatever, you let him speak. His dialogue, his oratory is, um, is awesome and will always be awesome. And I actually do feel like Cogsworth got less lines in this movie than he had in the animated movie. Why? Why on earth would you do that? Especially when you cast Ian freaking McKellen as him. He should have had amazing lines where he was consoling the beast. He should have had amazing concepts where he was consoling the castle. When he was trying to... He would have been the perfect guy to explain uh, a lot of the beast's backstory. He was the major domo. He was the master of the house. Why wasn't he speaking? I just don't get it. And then on top of that, here's the thing. Ian McKellen doesn't need to speak to steal a scene. His presence alone can do it. We've seen it in previous movies where he's not said a line up until a point and he is the center focus on that screen. Except here's the problem. It wasn't him. Nine tenths of the movie, it was a CG clock. One that I might add looked sillier than in the animated movie. And therefore was not imposing was not amazing to look at. It was dumb. And that's why I'm saying Ian McKellen was wasted here. 
I honestly believe you could have recast David Ogden Steers. You could have cast anybody, any schmo into this role, given the amount of lines that Cogsworth had, and you would have gotten a similar performance. If you added more lines and you probably had his physical counterpart on the screen a little bit more, this would have been heavily remedied. But you didn't. And that's that's one of my major beefs with the with this movie. I do believe Ian McKellen was wasted. Uh, my other beef with this is, as much as I have uh, applauded the fleshing out of the backstory, some characters didn't get enough. And I actually will say, for as much as I love the Beast's backstory, I also have an issue with it. It needs to be more fleshed out. I feel like there was more fleshing out of Belle's storyline overall than of the beasts. And the beast, I'm not saying Bell isn't a focus, but the beast is as well. I mean, for crying out loud, we got this whole backstory involving she wanted to know the origins of her mother, she wanted to know when when her father met her mother, and he was willing to only tell so much. So then we got the, the cool moment, and I'm going to spoil, because that's what we do here, where we actually went to the home where her mother died. And that was awesome. That was a great scene. It really empowered that, that whole moment. It empowered Belle in finding out her origins. It also had a great moment for the Beast to empathize with her. What did the Beast get? Well, we know his mother died of a disease, I'm guessing. And his father was a douchebag. Why no more than that? I want to know exactly how he was a douchebag. I want to know, like, you you had the emphasis here. Again, this would have been a great moment for Ian McKellen to steal the freaking show and have him explain why the fo the former master of the castle was an utter douchebag. Why did, he cor why did he harden his son so much? What happened there? And instead we got, well, the master before him was cruel. That doesn't tell me what I want to know. Like, I haven't had this question before, and now I'm like, oh, well, how was he? Because, I mean, he educated you, and he made you the master of the castle. How did he improve, how did he improve on your vanity? How did, he, how did he do all that stuff? Nothing. That is something that could have been improved on, in my humble opinion. And it's sad, because this, this did so much additional stuff that... When you look at that glazing little detail, it's a problem. It's a very big problem for me. Those are my biggest beefs with this film. Um, aside from the whole Emma Thompson shtick. I'm not faulting Emma. It's just she unfortunately walked into a bad situation there. But I think even she knew that. Because I, I could have sworn I've read an interview. She's like, yeah, I'm no Angela Lansbury. And I understand that. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the final scores. Now that I've given my likes and I've given my dislikes, despite the problems that I have with it, I have no problem giving this a solid nine out of 10, four out of five stars, whatever you want to go with. It is a store. It is a movie that I think improves on the original. I think it's something that Disney fans should be able to see. I think we have a story being told that isn't your typical Disney story. You don't have your typical Prince Charming, your princess, or anything like that. I actually would dare say that if you're going to, like, for little kids, show them the animated feature because that's magical to them. But once they get a little bit older, show them the CG version or show them the live action version because I think they would be able to get so much more out of that at that age than, uh, than the animated feature would give them. And I, I still think that the animated feature to them would still be timeless. Uh, so yeah, I have no problem giving this thing a 9 out of 10. As far as money that I would recommend that you guys spend on it, I have no reservations about it. The only thing I'm not going to uh, talk about is I didn't see it in 3D, so I don't know if it's necessarily worth that. But I could tell you, like, I, I would have no problem going back and seeing this in IMAX. I, I, think, it would be, I think it would be an awesome experience. Um, but yeah, I have no problem recommending this. If you're going to go in uh, matinee time or, or prime time, do so. I think you'll have a good time. And that's going to go ahead and do it for this vlog of Beauty and the Beast. Now, stay tuned next week, or at least the following week, 
as as a gr- Geek News group review. Uh, so it's not going to be just me and Alex, but you guys will also get it in the playlist. Uh, you'll see us taking on the recently rebooted Power Rangers by Lionsgate. We'll see you guys next time.